Hi! Today I'll show you how you can get most out of your CPU when you're in FL Studio. After you have completed all the steps I'm about to show you, you will experience a lot less lag, random project crashes and CPU overload. Most of these steps are simple changes to your settings inside FL Studio, while others are more involved. Before I start the video, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Plugin Boutique. I just became their affiliate, meaning that if you use my affiliate link to purchase any plugins from them, I get a small commission. It does not cost you any extra money, but I got a cut out of their sale. So if you're planning on purchasing from them anyways, it would help me out tremendously if you did so through my link, which you can find in the description below. I personally love Plugin Boutique, which is why I'm very happy to be their affiliate. They often have great discounts and good offers, so I recommend checking them out. Now back to the video. Let's begin with getting some basic stuff outside of FL Studio out of the way first. Let's go to power settings and make sure our plan is set to high performance. Then we'll open task manager and go to details and set FL Studio to high priority. And while we are here, we'll close any unnecessary programs running in the background. With that out of the way, we are ready to jump into FL Studio and make some changes there. First things first, make sure you have the newest version installed of FL Studio. FL Studio comes with lifetime free updates, so use them for what they're worth. The software is constantly getting better and that includes CPU performance as well. Now let's take a look at the audio settings. Up in the right corner, we have the sample rate. Leave it at 44.1 kHz. You only need a higher sample rate for very specific tasks. So the only thing turning it up will achieve is obliterating your CPU. So just leave it alone. Next, let's make sure we are using an ASIO device and not a direct sound device. ASIO drivers are more efficient and communicate faster with FL Studio. So they're better. Underneath, we have an ASIO panel. Here, we can change the buffer length. The longer we set it, the more time we give our CPU to process everything. But be aware, increasing the buffer length also gives us more latency, so don't turn it up too high if you are recording vocals or MIDI. But if you are experiencing a lot of glitches and lag, turning this up can help. You can also experiment with mixing buffer switch and triple buffer. Personally, I haven't gotten much out of it, but I've heard that others do and that it works well with certain audio interfaces. So try enabling them and see what it does for you. Next, we'll set the mixer priority to highest and turn off safe overloads. Don't worry, an unsafe overload will just make the interface controls lock up momentarily. In the CPU window, the most important thing is that multi-threaded generator processing and multi-threaded mixer processing is enabled. This lets your CPU spread the work over several cores, which is a good thing as it means the CPU has less load on any particular core. Enable smart disable as well, we'll get back to what that does in a moment. Going down to the mixer, the resampling quality should not be set any higher than 24 point sync. The lower you set it, the better performance you get. That's it for the audio settings, now let's head into the project tab. Here we can change the PPQ. The higher our PPQ is, the more we can zoom in, allowing us to make fine edits. But it's also using a lot more CPU, so if we want higher performance, we should have it at a low value. Be aware that changing the PPQ changes the resolution of several things, so changing it mid-project can alter the placement of your notes and clips if they fall between the new grids. You lose a lot of editing resolution by turning down the PPQ, but most of the time you really don't need it, so I think it's a good trade-off for more performance. The next thing we'll do is go to Tools, then Macros and click Select Unused Channels. This will select all plugins and sounds you're not using. Then we can go to channel options and click delete selected. And boom, we just saved some CPU and memory. There is also a quick option to just delete unused audio clips. And right underneath that option, we have switch smart disable for all plugins, which is what I mentioned earlier. What it does is turning off all plugins where they are not being used. So when you pause your project or you are working on a segment where certain VSTs aren't playing, they get switched off instead of constantly running in the background. So be smart and use Smart Disable. The last settings we'll look at before getting into more involved stuff is in whatever third-party plugins we are using, because they can be very CPU hungry, especially big boys like Serum. Go to VST Wrapper Settings, then Processing, and make sure that Allow Threaded Processing is turned on. It should be allowed by default, but it doesn't hurt to double check. This just allows our CPU to use all its resources. Next, we have the quality settings, which are located different from plugin to plugin. In Serum, they are under the global tab. As a rule of thumb, I find that mid settings often tend to work best. The small difference between whatever the mid setting is and the highest setting is not worth the toll it's having on the CPU performance. 
but going to the lowest setting is usually not worth the potential performance gain because there is actually a noticeable difference in quality. So in Serum I would leave it at 2. But try this out for yourself in every plugin you use and see how low quality you can get away with. It quickly adds up when you do this with all your VSTs. Another thing to keep in mind with your VSTs are the number of voices. Do you really need 16 voices on that synth? Or is 7 enough? Listen, do you hear any difference? If not, if it's not crucial for the sound, turn it down and you'll save a lot of CPU. While we're on the topics of plugins, you should avoid using bridged ones, which is when you open a 32-bit plugin in 64-bit FL Studio, or the other way around. This uses extra processing power, so try to prevent it. If you have watched some of my other videos, this next tip should not come as a surprise to you. Use sense to add effects. Most commonly, sense are used for reverbs and delays, but they can also be used for other effects like choruses or distortion. So instead of using 50 reverbs, which can use a lot of CPU, why not set up 5 reverbs with sense? This also comes with other benefits. Using few reverbs can give your mix a more cohesive feel, as your instruments sound like they exist in the same universe. You also get the flexibility to EQ your effects without affecting the original signal. Now, let's take a look at bouncing out some of the instruments, which is turning the sound processed off our VSTs into audio. In FL Studio, this is called consolidating. To consolidate an instrument, you can right-click any given pattern and select either render as audio clip or render and replace. Or alternatively, you can go to the playlist and consolidate the whole track. The latter method turns everything you have on that strip to audio, including different instruments and sounds. When you have consolidated something, the pattern and VST will still be there. You can consider deleting it if you're feeling confident enough that you won't need it anymore. You don't need to consolidate everything. I would just start by taking whatever is eating most of your CPU. And you can check that by double clicking the CPU meter, which will bring up the plugin performance monitor. Here we can find out what is causing us most trouble and just consolidate those elements. Finally, two extra quick tips before I end this video. Make a habit of closing all windows in FL. You can press F12 to do this all simultaneously. This should improve CPU performance. My other tip is to use stock plugins wherever you can. For example, when you just need to execute simple EQ tasks like cutting the low end of something, just use Parametric EQ too. FabFilter Pro Q is amazing, but leave it for more delicate tasks where you actually need it. Don't put it on all your tracks. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Before you click off, if this helped you out, do give it a like and subscribe to my channel, and I promise to bless your feed with great FL Studio content. If you want to support me and what I do, you can check out my Patreon, link in the description down below. See ya!